What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the bench for another episode here on Ben Builds. And today, I wanted to go ahead and do a really quick stash update. I just picked up a couple of kits over this last month, so I thought, why not go ahead, let you guys see what I've picked up. Now, I'm actually still working on what I'm going to be building for the next couple of episodes here on Military Mondays, but until then, I thought you guys might get a kick out of seeing a couple of kits that I just recently picked up. So, let's get started. Now, the first kit we have up here on the bench is the 148 scale F4U7 Corsair in the French Naval Markings. And this has always been one of those kits I've wanted to build for a while now. I just haven't got around to picking one up. The other day, I happened to be on eBay. I found this for a very nice price. I decided, let's grab it. So I did. It's Hasegawa, so I know it's probably going to be a pretty decent build. Opening up the box, we can see that we have our very typical single poly bag with all the parts in there. We've got one sheet for our decals, and we have one also clear canopy, front windscreen, and then we have our instructions. So yeah, typical for Hasegawa, nothing too crazy there. The amount of ordnance that this thing can carry is just shocking. You can see it right here, all these different wing pilots with bombs or rockets or fuel tanks or whatever you need. It's just a ton of ordnance that this thing can carry. So that's always kind of an intriguing to me. Now this is again for the French naval version. And from my understanding, we went ahead and gave the French Navy a bunch of Corsairs and they used them through, I think the Suez Canal crisis and a couple of other times. I don't know really how they performed, but I know the paint scheme with that black and yellow stripes are really, really cool. So that is what we have here. The F4U7 Corsair in the French naval version by Hasegawa, 148 scale. Also, with these black and yellow stripes, I'd want to go ahead and paint those. I think that would be really, really fun to do. And with the tail markings as well, I'd like to paint those. I don't think I could paint the National Rondels because it has that anchor symbol on it, and I don't know how I would even go about painting that. But I think I could actually paint the other colors just fine, and it would be kind of fun to do. Now, I think you can also buy the Hobby Boss version of the F4U7, but this one is actually a little bit better because I guess the Hobby Boss version has incorrect wing tips. It has tips with fabric cover instead of the metal covering that we get here on the Hasegawa version. I think that would be a really fun build to go ahead and do. So that's our first kit. So for our second kit here on the bench, I have to go ahead and say that uh, I owe this one to Joe. He actually sent me the eBay link to this particular model, and I am very excited to go ahead and build this at some point. As you all well know, I love World War II aircraft, and I also love Russian World War II aircraft. So with that in mind, this is the Lavochkin LA-5 in 148 scale by Zvezda. Now I've actually already built this kit. I built it probably about, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, maybe a little bit more, and I had a blast with this kit. I will admit it's a little over engineered in the engine area and the nose area, but it actually goes together very well. It's one of those kits that I just absolutely had a blast building, so I decided let's build another one. I kind of want to try to recreate some of these older builds that I did when I was just first learning how to weather. This way, I could go ahead and practice some more skills and make something look even better than it did before. Maybe build things more correctly. Now, in terms of paint, we do actually have a modern set of paints. This is the Vallejo model air color for all the early war Soviet fighters. And this is very typical, kind of that NATO black, blackish green. And then it's got the light olive green with the light blue. So it's got all the colors I would need. And I think that would be a great place to go ahead and start. Now, not that I'm going to jump into this kit right away, guys. I'm going to probably let it sit for a little bit because I've got another project lined up that would be very similar to this. So I don't want to overload with Russian aircraft. But it is a kit that I am actually very excited to go ahead and to throw into the rotation. One of my favorite fighters, and it actually is a derivative of the Lag-3, which is another one of my favorite early war Russian fighters. I can't wait to go ahead and crack into it and give it another try. See if I can't do a little bit better job this time. Now for our last kit here on the bench, um, I'm going to get some flack for this, I know, and I'm looking at you, Joe. I know you're going to give me some flack for this one, but you all know I love Cold War American aircraft, especially naval aircraft. I just couldn't resist myself, guys. I had to pick it up. This is the 148 scale Kitty Hawk FJ3 Fury. I know it's a Kitty Hawk kit, and that's not great, but I really like the Fury. And the FJ3 just came out. I had to grab it. It's got some really interesting looking color schemes, which are probably completely incorrect, mind you, but I will have actually another inbox detailed look at this Fury kit. We'll do that a little bit later. I'm a big fan of Cold War aircraft. I love the FJ Fury series. I just built the FJ2 about a year ago, and it was an okay build, a lot easier than the last Kitty Hawk kit I built, which was the F9F8P Photo Cougar. That was next to impossible. I did end up finishing it though, so this would be hopefully along the lines of the FJ2 Fury and not the F9F8. Of course, being Kitty Hawk, who knows what it looks like on the inside. Like I said, we're going to go in and do a detailed look at this kit a little bit later. But that's going to do it for us today, guys. This is what I've just picked 
picked up recently over this last month for the stash. These are actually a great addition to my stash. I'm not really sure what I want to go ahead and build next though. There's a couple of group builds that are going on that I might want to jump into and these won't fit for those group builds of course but I do have a couple of kits also that I'm interested in building. I'm really going to worry about it too much. I'm going to take another week or so to kind of mull it over and I'm hoping by the end of this coming week I should have something decided on and ready for a new build series. But anyway, guys, we will go ahead and see you back here next week on another episode of Ben Builds. Until then, you guys know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. Thanks so much. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye.